Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. My name is Radhika and today we are going to talk about five coding myths that you must know about. So let's get into the video. So let us begin with talking about the myth that has stopped a lot of people to even start to code. And that is, coding is not for everyone. You have to be absolute genius to learn to code. But I don't think that's true. Let me ask you a question there. Why do you think lions are the king of the jungle? Are they the fastest? No. Cheetahs are. Are they the smartest? No. Hyenas are. Are they the biggest? No. Elephants are. But still, when an elephant sees a lion, he runs for his life even though he is more powerful than the cat. The elephant here is the victim of how he thinks. On the other hand, when a lion sees an elephant, he charges towards him because he believes that he can eat the elephant. So, it all comes down to what kind of attitude you have. Lion is the king of the jungle because of the different attitude that he possesses, And our attitude is the result of our beliefs. We become what we believe we can be. So the only people who can't be good coders are the one who think that they cannot be. So stop limiting yourself. Stop making excuses saying that I can't do this because once you start believing it, you can do it. Now that we are clear on that part, the next myth that a lot of people do possess is that mathematical skills is absolutely necessary for you to learn to code. But that's not true. Mathematics is definitely required in some fields of computer science such as ML or AI or data science, but not in all. So suppose if you're learning to get into web development, then mathematical skills is not at all important. There, what matters is how well you can solve problems. So coding is a lot about uh, how you tackle problems creatively and how well you are able to implement the solutions that you have uh, thought of. So it's more about logical thinking, perseverance and patience rather than your mathematical skills. Now that we are in a position to at least start to learn to code, the another barrier that people face because of the misconception that they have is uh, that they have to find that one language that is best for them. But there is no language which is better than the other. The languages cannot be compared. It is all dependent on the situation or the purpose that you're using that language for. So for example, if you are looking into fields like web development and that is why you want to learn to code, then again, there also, there are so many languages and you have to decide what uh, part of web development you want to go into, front end, back end or full stack. If you are into front end, then you have to focus on languages like uh, JavaScript, HTML, CSS and frameworks like uh, React. But if you are into back end, then you have to go for languages like Java, Python, C++ uh, or uh, PHP. And in the beginning, if you don't have any uh, particular field uh, in mind that you might want to pursue in future, then um, what you can do is you can uh, focus on uh, building the programming concepts and for that low level languages are the best like C++ or Java because that helps you to understand the concepts of programming in a much better way and also it uh, helps you understand uh, how computers work. So basically uh, it all depends on the purpose of yours to learn to code and uh, the application that uh, is going to happen with that coding. So don't restrict yourself, don't waste a lot of time trying to find that perfect language for you. Just start. Now that we have boasted those myths, we are at least in a position to start to learn to code. But what hampers our progress next in this journey is our need to absolutely ace a topic before moving on to the next one. So uh, let me explain. When you join a course, uh, there's a proper hierarchy set that this is how you need to progress in your learning journey. First, you have to understand the basics, the fundamentals of programming, and then you need to move to DSA and then there's advanced DSA. So, let me take the example of DSA. Again, there are topics, uh, there are arrays, stacks, queues, trees, right? And uh, one by one, we learn them, right? So, how many questions do you think are enough for you to understand arrays or stacks? There's no limit, right? You can solve 50 questions, 100 questions, 500 questions, and still, there will be something that you won't be able to do, you won't be able to understand. So it is an absolute waste of time to just stick to one data structure and uh, trying to ace that. Remember, the skill that we are working on is our thinking ability and our problem solving skills. So we have to give ourselves uh, the liberty to move on to the next topic even if we are not satisfied with what we have already learned because gradually with practice things are going to fall into place.
The next myth is that you have to have the syntax by heart and this becomes a barrier when you have actually started to learn to code and now you are using it uh, for some uh, purpose, right? You are applying your knowledge. So as we already discussed, language is very specific to the purpose and the application that you are doing uh, with coding. So don't you think investing your time in uh, trying to learn the syntax is not a very good idea because anyway, uh, when your purpose changes, the language will change and again, the whole cycle will repeat so our main focus should be how to solve a problem how to come up with the best solution of the given problem we can write it in any language uh, learning a syntax is not very difficult in fact it's readily available on google you don't need to learn it at all with that moving on to the last myth uh, that uh, comes into picture when you are actually into some kind of development work is you have to write the shortest code possible of course that is true to some extent but not on the cost of readability it's easy to write code that computer understands but what we need is to write code that humans can read and uh, understand effectively because moving ahead in your career you will be working on products which not only you are going to to read but a lot of other people in your team is also going to read and work on so you have to make sure that whatever code you are writing is readable understandable so that is going to increase the productivity of other team members as well with whom you're working for example let's say i write a code something like this do you understand what this condition is for no right but instead of this if i write it something like this now you might expect something in the lines of vaccination. So clarity is clearly better. With clarity, uh, the code is easier to refactor as well. Uh, what if you uh, want to handle other dates or age groups as well? Apart from this, what if you want to add additional eligibility criteria? What you can do instead is uh, to replace each condition with a uh, method call now this is definitely going to increase your number of lines because you will be adding one or two lines in each method call but this is also going to give you abstraction level what if you are someone who is not interested in knowing the eligibility criteria for vaccinations you are just interested to know if you're going to get the vaccination or not so this is also going to help you in uh, achieving uh, abstraction so here definitely writing more lines of code was better than writing a shorter code which was not understandable at all i hope with these ideas now clear in your mind you will be able to learn coding in a better way and apply those learnings in an effective manner do let me know how do you like this video in the comment section below i will be back with another video very soon till then bye bye